Welcome back friends. Let's talk a little bit about some coffees. How about some instant coffees out on the trail? Because you know it's really nice to have a good cup of coffee especially when you wake up and you hear the pitter patter rain out there and it's cold and crappy. Man there's nothing like a good cup of coffee. And it's really hard to get a cup of coffee like home with some of these instants. But they're getting pretty darn good. Everyone knows about the uh, backpacking standard which is the Starbucks Via. You can get these in different blends. You can get them just about anywhere as you can with most of these which just about any grocery store, Target, Walmart, Randall's, Kroger, just about any of those. But it is a little pricey. Even at Walmart this is six bucks a box which equates to about $1.50 a cup of coffee. Doesn't sound like much if you're spending four or five dollars for a cup of coffee but if you're a through hiker that's a lot of money every day. Right next to it, you're going to find this. And this is the Folgers Instant. They make it in a couple different blends. It's only a dollar a box, which is about eh, 29, 30 cents a cup, something like that. But if you're familiar with a good craft beer, this is kind of like the Michelob Ultra of, of coffee. Uh, coffee, not so much. But if it's the only thing you can get, you know, you can get by with that. Here's another one. This is actually an espresso brew made popular by Suge over on his channel. Made popular with backpackers. It is a bold and robust blend. You will have to mix it up though yourself. Not a big deal. Just get some uh, saran wrap and uh, how many ever teaspoons you usually use for your cup of coffee. You just put it in there. You twist it up, tie it off, and you carry it with you. Really good stuff and it's going to run you about 70 cents a cup. So in between these two and uh, with a very very good flavor. Now speaking of flavor that's going to go as far as how much you mix in there. For instance if you've ever seen Suge's channel he's like a rat on crack and uh, so he held up one day he goes yeah I'm gonna go make me a Make me a cup of coffee. And he looked this, this is what he put up there. I'm going, no wonder you're like a group of 14 year olds with a case of Red Bull. This is about, this is two teaspoons. This is the recommended, <laughs> the recommended amount to mix. This is what Suge mix up. So this is why uh, we all know and love him because he runs around like a crazy person. You got to check out his channel. But uh, mix it to your particular liking is all I'm saying. Now let me show you what I did on this last trip. I decided to try something different, get rid of the instants, and go with what I drink at home which is just the old Folgers classic roast. It's just a medium blend. I'm not a big coffee snob. I didn't even start drinking coffee until I was 45 years old. And then it was uh, only because someone made me drink some at Starbucks because they really didn't believe I'd I didn't drink coffee and it was like a caramel macchiato or some crap like that. I've weaned myself off of that stuff. I just drink a cup of coffee pretty much every day with cream and sugar. Not a big deal. But I wanted my coffee to taste more like what I could get at home out on the trail. So I found this at the old Aura EI and this is the Sea to Summit X Brew. There's some different little brewing methods out there. I'm not taking a French press or anything and going to all that trouble. By the same token, I'm not going to make cowboy coffee. Uh, I'm not a coffee snob, but I want it to taste pretty decent. So I got to checking this thing out. And if you're familiar with the Sea to Summit products, the collapsible bowls, the collapsible mugs, it's the same uh, sturdy rubber rubberized product that will take boiling hot water with no problem. Uh, this thing has a ultra fine mesh screen on the bottom and a more coarse grind on the top. Will handle 16 ounces of water, which is good compared to say some of the other ones that are out there. I know GSI makes one that it's got like three little plastic tripod legs, and then it's got a, a mesh sack that sits in the middle. You put your grinds in the sack and you pour your water and, and let it brew. The difference between that and this is you can pour your entire boiling water in here and just walk away and let it go. Whereas the other you might have to pour, let it fill up, 
drain down, pour, drain down, so on and so forth. This has a nice sturdy uh, base, so even in the wind or something, this thing isn't going anywhere. It's not going to fall off. It's not going to blow over, and you can even put it uh, on top of a Nalgene bottle. Say you're a guy that likes to you know, mix up a half a bottle of coffee and take it out on the trail for the entire morning. Uh, you can do that with this. Clean up, uh, back flush a little bit, you know, knock the grinds out, back flush a little bit, and uh, fold her back up and uh, put it in your pack. Now, weight penalty on this, for sure the GSI is really lightweight, probably a little harder to clean up, uh, but this thing, uh, she's a porker, about three ounces, so if weight is super important to you, you know, you might want to look at something else, but this hangs right next to the GSI one there at REI, so you can compare them yourself. I've noticed some other ones on Amazon that are very similar to this one. Don't have near as wide a base, but they do sit on top of a, well, this is a manly coffee cup here, boxer dog. Uh, but uh, it's not as big a base as this, so it wouldn't fit on near as big a coffee cup. So anyway, that's the difference between the ones I've seen on Amazon. So what I've started doing, or what I did on this last trip, is I brought out the X-Brew. I used my Folgers, two teaspoons, wrapped it up in a little uh, saran wrap, put some tape around it. You're not going to have any more waste with this than you are with the Starbucks packets. And uh, I just took three of them with me, how many you know you need for, for how many ever cups you're gonna make. It's a pretty easy deal. And uh, it was really nice having uh, the same coffee at, on the trail that I enjoy at, at home too. Nowadays with, obviously we've had these different types of sweetener packs and sugar packs around, it's made it convenient for us. But the other thing that's made it super convenient is now you don't even have to deal with that uh, powdered creamer, which is uh, eh, not so hot, but you know, you can get by with it. Um, if you want another little comfort item to take with you, if you're not worried too much about weight, now you can get uh, actual creamer. Carnation makes one, it just happens to be about a third bigger bottle, third heavier, everything about it's bulkier. I only needed something for the weekend. This one is happen, uh, happens to be made by Equal. I will warn you though on these creamers, they are super sweet. So add it sparingly and just kind of test it out, you know, for whatever you want. Make sure you get a good bottle. Uh, they have date codes on them. Make sure you get a fresh bottle. And then once you open these, they're good for 30 days. And that's without refrigeration. So that's the good thing about uh, taking it out with you. So it's perfect for a weekend or a week trip or something like that, especially if you don't use a lot of creamer. Obviously, if you're going through the desert, it's 100 degrees every day. Um, you know, your mileage may vary. But it says it's good for, oops, good for 30 days without refrigeration. So, coffee continues to get more convenient and better and cheaper for us out on the trail now that you can kind of bring your own. So, let me know what you think. Let me know what your ideas and plans have been out on the trail for your coffee needs. I like to hear what other people are doing and compare it to what I'm doing as well. So until next time, you guys be safe and we hope to see you out on